Hey kids, thanks for joining us this week. We pray each of you are enjoying your time learning about Jesus. Now let's remember, there are a couple things we need you to do. Be sure to thank your parents and give them a big hug for all they do. And share this video with a friend or your classmates. Now parents, stay tuned at the end of this video for some instructions on how to finish the lesson. Now who's ready to get started? Hey everyone, my name is Susanna, but you can call me Suze. We're gonna kick the day off by singing about God together, so everyone stand up and sing along. You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm sad, I know, and then you are with me, yeah you are with me. You know when I'm worried, you know when I'm mad, I know, and then I can trust you. Trust you. you don't want perfection, you just want my best And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything, He knows everything God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything, He knows everything You know when I'm lonely, you know when I'm tired, I know And then you are with me, yeah you are with me You know when I'm worried, you know when I'm mad, I know And then I can trust you you. you don't want perfection, you just want my best And when my mind is racing, you will give me rest God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything, He knows everything God is greater, greater than my feelings He knows everything, He knows everything You are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not Woo! You are greater than all I feel You know it all and you always will I trust in you with all that I've got Doesn't even matter if I feel it or not Woo! God is greater than Great singing, everyone! We all have feelings, but no matter what, God is greater than our feelings. And that's what this Blueprint series is all about. Have any of you ever watched a show on TV or a video on YouTube about building or construction? Well, I have the honor of being one of the hosts of the hit construction show, Build It, with my good pal, Skip. Take a look at what happened while we were filming our latest episode. Demo day! was fun. Let's see what's next. Check electrical outlets, run the water, don't demo the gray wall. Uh-oh, this is not good. Let's just put that back. Susanna's gonna be so mad at me. 
Like, mm. I ate the last jelly donut kind of mad. Skip, where are you? Hey, Seuss, how's it going? Oh no, this wall wasn't supposed to be demoed. Who did this? Skip, did you do this? Me? No, it must have been a herd of rhinos coming through. They were all like, ah, ah, and they, yeah. Rhinos, huh? Are you sure? Oh, sure, they're the worst. And the blueprints clearly say, don't demo this wall. But you know rhinos, they can't read. So you didn't do this. Why would I demo this wall? Well, I thought you were starting in this room today. Oh, well, I decided to start in the kitchen instead. But we've already demoed the kitchen. Right. Uh, okay, you're right. I was so excited about demo day that I forgot to check the blueprints. I'm so sorry, Suze. I forgive you, Skip. This really stinks, but it's going to be okay. I'll go get what we need to fix it. Oh, man. I still feel so bad about demoing that wall. I've got to find a way to make it up to Susanna. I'll be right back. Skip, what are you doing? Well, I can't stop thinking about what I did, and I still feel so guilty. Will you please forgive me? Skip, you already said you're sorry, and I already forgave you. You didn't have to go and get me flowers. But these will make a nice centerpiece. Susanna, are you in here? Yes, Skip. What in the world? Did you buy donuts for the whole neighborhood? No, they're all for you. Just to say that I'm really sorry. It's really okay. I forgave you and now we need to focus on getting this place finished. We have a lot of work left. But I'm really, really, really. Oh man. Those are some serious feelings we're dealing with here. I think there's something important we can all learn from that. Whenever we start to feel our emotions building up, we need to deal with how we feel and here are three steps into doing just that. The first step is to stop and figure out how we're really feeling. This can be tough, but it's important because if we're not careful, we can let our emotions get the best of us. If that happens, things can seem worse than they actually are, which can cause us to make decisions that we can't undo. So let's stop right now and talk about the emotions we just saw. We saw Skip feeling guilty about demoing the wrong wall. And even though I really wasn't all that upset, he was still trying so hard to make up for what he had done wrong. Feeling guilty can make you do some crazy things, especially if you don't do step two, which is to look. When we look around, it's easy to see that everyone makes mistakes. And mistakes are okay because they remind us how much Jesus loves and forgives us. 
It was good for Skip to recognize he had done something wrong, but after I forgave him, he didn't have to keep feeling guilty and saying sorry. He could have looked at what was really going on to see that he was already forgiven. And even if I was still mad at him, the truth is that Jesus had already forgiven him. And we know that is the truth when we do step three, which is to listen. We've got to listen to God's blueprint for life, the Bible. God gave us the Bible as the blueprint for us to deal with how we feel. Here, check this out. Hey, everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Oh, yeah. What you got for us today? Well, today we're talking about feeling guilty. You're guilty? For what? I didn't do it. I have no idea who ate your sandwich that had three sliced tomatoes, four black olives, two strips of bacon, Swiss and cheddar cheese with the crust cut hey, off. Hey, hey, whoa, 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 how do you know so much about my sandwich? Okay, guilty as charged. It just looks so good. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have eaten it. That's okay. When we do something wrong and we ask for forgiveness, we don't need to feel guilty because Jesus forgives us. Ah, gotcha. So, no guilt. Kick guilt to the curb. Hey, yeah. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. Exactly. And you know who I think of when we talk about all this? Han Solo. Guilty for having the fastest ship in the galaxy. Or, oh, oh I know. Iron Man. Guilty for wearing the coolest suit ever. No. Peter from the Bible. Peter followed Jesus, but like all of us, he wasn't perfect. Sometimes he messed up. One time, he even pretended not to know Jesus. Peter was Jesus' friend, and he acted like he didn't know him? Talk about a total diss. Why would he ever do that? Well, you would think that Jesus was Mr. Popular back then, and everyone would want to hang out with him. Yeah, he probably had the coolest toys and tons of friends. But there were a lot of people who actually hated him. And these same people came up with a plan to have Jesus arrested. When they arrested Jesus and took him away, Peter followed him, but kept his distance. Oh, Peter was probably hiding out, planning a sneak attack. More like a sneak away. He didn't want anyone to see him. I'm pretty sure Peter was afraid that he'd be arrested too. In fact, when a nearby servant girl saw him and asked if he knew Jesus, Peter totally denied it. Denied knowing Jesus? Not cool. Not cool at all. And to make things worse, two more people came up and asked Peter if he knew Jesus, and he gave them the same answer. Deny, deny, deny. What is Peter's problem? After the third time Peter denied knowing Jesus, before he could even finish his sentence, a rooster crowed. cock doo doo That's when Jesus looked at him, and Peter remembered. <gasps> that he forgot to tie his shoes? That he never fed the dog? That he forgot to put the toilet seat he down? He remembered what Jesus had said the night before. Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times before the rooster crows. And sure enough, Peter did. This made him so sad that he went away and cried. Peter felt so guilty for what he had done. A while later, after Jesus had died and come back to life, he was having breakfast with his friends. I bet Jesus could cook the best breakfast. Talk about a grand slam. When they finished eating, Jesus asked Peter three different times if he loved him. All three times, Peter said, yes, Jesus, you know that I love you. Wait, three times? That's the same amount of times that Peter said he didn't even know Jesus. On the third time, Peter did feel hurt that Jesus would question him like this. But the good news is, Jesus had forgiven Peter for denying him. Because Jesus forgave him, Peter didn't need to hold on to that guilty feeling. So the next time we feel guilty, we can remember that Jesus forgives us. As you saw from that true story, Peter really hurt Jesus and had so many reasons to feel guilty. But during that breakfast, Peter realized that Jesus had forgiven him. Feelings of guilt come in when we're so focused on what we did wrong instead of how much Jesus loves and forgives us. When we do something wrong, we should say we're sorry and then let ourselves move on from it. When we do that, we can stop feeling guilty and start celebrating that we've been forgiven. The next time we find ourselves feeling guilty, we can stop, look, and listen, and we'll see that Jesus forgives every wrong thing we've already done and will ever do. And that's what we need to know today. Everybody say it with me. When I feel guilty, Jesus forgives me. That's it. You can deal with how you feel when you stop, look, and listen. 
Now we're gonna play a game called Spot It. Two cards will appear on the screen, and your job is to spot the object that appears on both of the cards as quickly as possible. You'll have 10 seconds before the cards disappear, so try to spot it fast. On your mark, get set, go! Great game, everybody! Now there's one more way to deal with all of your feelings, and that's to worship God by singing. So let's do it! Thanks for hanging out this week. Remember that God gave you all of your feelings and he's always there to help you deal with them. Next up are some questions to help your family talk about what you learned today and pray together. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks for joining us today. Now you get to be your children's crew leader. The Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 6-7, teach God's word to your children when you're at home and when we go about our daily lives. 
when you go to bed, and when you get up. So God is asking us to translate His truths to our kids. Start the conversation today. Now don't worry, we're here to help. Click on the link below this video to download the questions and activities. The best inheritance we can leave a child is to teach them about Jesus. We pray you have an amazing time teaching your children as the Holy Spirit moves through your family.